Hello! Today, we are moving on to the Outlander skirts. Yes, I know, we are still on wool winter clothing and the summer is fast approaching and I... <laughs> taking my time getting these videos up. I promise we will finish this series just in time for winter 2021. But this week we are back to the Outlander outfits, which should be finished up with the next video, which would be the bodice. I do intend to make some stockings, I just haven't yet, and that will be kind of a bonus video whenever I do make those. So, so I started this Outlander project around September last year, and in October I made a brief trip back to France because of visa issues, I'm in the Netherlands, you only have so much time, etc, etc. I'm mentioning that in the video, don't get confused, I'm not going to France right now, but I did in October or November or whenever that was. I can't quite remember now. Every day is Groundhog Day. Don't worry, I'm not going to France right now, I am still in the Netherlands, and I am filming this right now at the end of April. You can tell by my long reddish hair. Anyway, Outlander skirts. Here we go. Back to October when I started on my wool skirts. I bought six yards of brown wool and six yards of this, um, mm, it's a patterned wool. It's not like tartan. You'll see. It's got, I don't know what that's called. It's not plaid. Oh, I'm really bad at this. I'm sorry. That's why I don't make real tutorials. I don't know what I'm talking about. But I bought two different kinds of wool in six yards each. Um, the, the more patterned wool I actually am going to use, well I've, I made two skirts out of that, one shorter than the other, which is excellent for walking around the house and up and down the stairs. I don't trip, it's great. And, and that one is also going to do double duty as Eliza Doolittle's skirt. Just watch for that. Just watch for that. Yes, I am making that outfit as well. My intention was to use the whole six yards of fabric in each skirt and make two skirts. Uh, based on what other people said they were doing in these forums for costuming, Outlander, Highlander things, lots of pleats, lots and lots of pleats. However, the, the wool is so thick that I had great trouble doing this um, and getting six yards of this fabric into one skirt. So I decided to uh, basically cut it in half and I'll have four skirts. I've made three so far and I'll make the other one when I'm ready. I think that's about all you need to know. Uh, skirts are pretty simple. You just, they're rectangles and you pleat them up. Uh, actually, um, the striped material, excellent. Excellent to have the stripes. It's so much easier to line it all up. It's great. I highly recommend plaids and stripes if you're gonna be pleating material. Now we can continue on and you can watch me make my skirts and I will see you at the end. The first thing I did after cutting my six yards down to three was then to fold it in half because I was too scared to cut it again just yet and then begin figuring out how I was going to pleat it. I wanted to base it on one of Claire's wool skirts from the first season making the front and back pleats different with one large pleat in the middle of the front while in the back there would be two large pleats side by side in the middle. Figuring out the size and spacing for these pleats to make the two sides just the right width to go around my waist with only a slight overlap took a lot longer than I thought it would but I eventually got there. I also had to make sure to leave enough space at the edges to fold over some fabric where the pockets and side seams were going to be. It's taken me a while, but I think I've sorted out my pleating for my first skirt. I can always undo it and change it <laughs> later. Um, this would be the front, and I'd cut it there, and this is the back. Um, and those would be the areas where it ties together and gives room for the pockets. I'm very nervous <laughs> about cutting. <laughs> But yes, this is a three meter uh, stretch of fabric, so that leaves me the other three meters. But here's the thing now, the back has to be longer than the front, and I need to figure out how to cut this so that happens. I want the even edge to be at the bottom, and the not so even edge to be at the top like I did with my petticoat. So I need to sort this out. This involves a lot more thinking than cutting sewing. So what I've done, <laughs> as you can see, pleated as best I can down to where I want to cut. I want this to be the back length and this to be the front length. So to get a nice curve, 
over the bum roll, but still have a nice straight uh, waistband. I've kind of wiggled this around a bit so it curves like this, and I'm trying to line up the middle there to the middle there, which is in between where I want the front to be and the back. This is actually, I forgot I need to leave some room for the waistband and what's going to get sewn in there. I'm just leaving a lot of extra because it's better than trying to add on, so I put an inch there. So I'll be cutting across there, the yellow ones. Um, after I cut it in half, I'm gonna cut it in half first and do the back, and then do the front. Oh, wish me luck. For the life of me, I couldn't figure out how people would cut the back of their skirts to be longer than the front and be able to get neat pleats at the same time, so I made up my own method, as you can see. This was easier to do on the brown wool, where misalignments might not be as noticeable, for the dark limestone and frost check wool from Fabworks in England, where I got all my wool if you're interested. Well, it was a little more complicated, but somehow I managed to do it. If you're going to ask, why didn't you cut the hem of the dress to be longer in the back? Well, for one, I have a very difficult time hemming anything that isn't a straight line. And for two, when it comes to the checkered fabric, I thought it would look too weird and wanted the lines to be all horizontal to the ground. So that answers your question. After that, I repinned the pleats back into a straight line, cut out a waistband for both the front and the back, and hand stitched them all together. So I've basted the waistband onto the back here, um, and then I will sew it on. I'll baste the one on the front as well. No, oh, sorry to skip ahead. Um, <laughs> I just got really into it and am sewing this waistband on the front and the back. Um, while watching things on YouTube, and I spaced out. Anyway, <laughs> I'm sewing the waistbands on by hand. I hope you can figure that out. <laughs> Good morning. This is what I look like in the morning after I've taken out my pin curls and before I've brushed my hair. Anyway, before I took my shimmy off, <laughs> I thought I would just try on half of the skirt. I pinned it up last night to where I thought it should be. I'm wearing my petticoat and my bum roll. Apologies for the mess. <laughs> All my sewing stuff strewn about. But um, I think that's about right. Yeah, then I need to pin the front part. That's fine. Oof, and that will be sewn together so it'll all be even. Um, yeah, progress. I think Within a week, within a week, I shall be nice and toasty warm. Breakfast time. Since I have to go away soon and won't have any floor space, I decided I would pleat this other one that I've got and get that all ready as well. I haven't finished the brown one yet. It's all pinned together and I need to stitch it up. I'm gonna do this one a little differently. I guess maybe I'll just show you rather than try to explain it. <laughs> Someone on the Facebook group uh, for Outlander costuming suggested doing it this way. She did it this way and liked it. I have been erring on the side of making everything longer than it needs to be. I am going to have giant hems down there, and I don't know how this happened, but I've got a lot left up here. Anyway, this will be the waistband. I'll fold that up, and this will be on the inside. It will flop over and give me a little extra volume on the inside and also if I ever decide I don't like my skirt I can take it apart and it's still two giant two meter long <laughs> pieces of fabric. Now that my skirts are in a form in which I can sew it while sitting on a couch and I don't have to spread out meters and meters of, along the floor it is time to pack them away into a bag or suitcase and bring them along with me. I'm traveling back to France temporarily at the moment while we sort out my Dutch visa thing. So I'll continue them there and hopefully get them done quickly so I can wear them. I'm excited about that. It's gone a little slow, but I'd rather be slow than make mistakes because wool is expensive. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's so expensive. To be continued um, in France. See you there. All right, it's a little dark, but let me show you. I have hemmed the pocket seam on one side and up this side. 
And I have to do the other side now. So what I'm doing <laughs> is uh, curling that in and sewing that down. And then for this, I am going to sew it and then trim the side and fold and curl that down over there to be just like this side. I would say like left or right, but I can't remember. Oh, the front to the back. But going well so far, might be able to wear this by tomorrow. So now I have hemmed the uh, other pocket side and I know it's so hard to see here, <laughs> but I sewed that together and I'm just cutting away there so that this one can fold over. There. Getting there. Oh, by the way, welcome to France. So I've hemmed it all together, did the seams, and now I have to put the waist straps on, waist ties. Does it have a name? <laughs> However, it is dark here. I've got one little Ikea light shining on my dark brown wool. It's a little difficult to show you things. I apologize. I want to get this done. So I'm going to see if I can get it done and hopefully model it for you tomorrow. Or the next day, you won't know the difference. So, back to work. I got a little lazy in the end and braided together some little strips of wool to make my waistbands. I don't really recommend doing this as they tend to stretch under the weight of the skirts and can pinch a bit if you're not wearing your stays. I eventually did replace them with wool sewn into two long strips which is much more secure however causes noticeable bulges and bumps where I tie them together. I haven't quite solved this yet and don't really know what other people use to tie their skirts on. Your advice is welcome. So my final thoughts on the production what I remember of it and my satisfaction with them since having made them and worn them fairly regularly over the winter. The most frustrating thing about making them was getting the pleats right. Uh, once I gave up trying to get six yards of material into one skirt, it was definitely much easier to do the pleating on just three yards. However, sorting out how many pleats, how wide they are, etc., etc. Um, definitely took a lot of time, so I got pretty frustrated at undoing that and redoing it, you know, several times before being happy with it and making sure everything lined up. So that was uh, my least favorite part of making them. However, other than that, it's a really easy process. No patterns to cut out. It's just it's just a rectangle, pure wool. Nice, good wool is pretty expensive. I believe I paid something like 30 euros, 30 pounds or something like that per yard of this wool. Made me anxious to cut it. You know, I'm anxious cutting any fabric really because you can't undo that. However, I didn't want any synthetic materials in this. I wanted it to be pure wool. I want all the benefits that wool gives you and I wanted to be eco-friendly with my choices and historically accurate and also having to pay so much for my fabric it got me curious about uh, fabric in the past you know and uh, what people had to pay for clothing I was thinking oh my gosh this is so expensive was it this expensive back then when they had so much sheep and this is what they wore and they didn't have polyester and I mean from what I can find in my brief googling is that yeah material was expensive in the past and that's why people only had a limited number of, of pieces in their wardrobe only a couple skirts two three I guess it depends on what money you have in general people didn't have too many pieces of clothing and and that was in part because the material was expensive and you took care of it and you reused it and yeah you respected it and I understand that today um, when I spend more on a piece of clothing I tend to take better care of it and hope it lasts longer however clothing today does not seem to last as long as clothing of the past but spending that much on my fabric kind of makes me appreciate it more and and I will be taking care of it 
I think my biggest threat is moths. We do have a moth problem around here. It's really terrible. But I definitely recommend if you're gonna make these outfits and you want to wear them regularly, you want them to last, you want the benefits of what our ancestors knew about, you know, linens and wools and, and cottons. I think buying the pure wool and pure cotton and pure linen and all those things, even if it's expensive, I think it's worth it to do that, to, to, to have that respect for clothing and the environment and learn about how these natural fibers react uh, with our bodies and with the temperature and I can't wait to learn. Some Someone said in one of these forums that she wears her wool skirts out in the summertime to these events and she is cooler than she would be in her jeans. It's better for you than synthetic fabrics. So in every way I think it's better to buy the natural fabrics even if it means you have to save up for it or not buy something else or make you know, one outfit instead of three, or whatever it is. I, I do think it's worth it for quality clothing, costumes, whatever you're using it for. I'm sure we've all heard that phrase, quality, not quantity. And I'm definitely trying to live more by that every day. Sometimes it's a slow process. I have gotten rid of a lot of clothing and I do want to get rid of more and really pare it down. I will still have quite a large wardrobe probably forever. But as for the comfort, yes, I was wearing them constantly over the winter, especially the shorter one that I made because it was easier to get up and down the stairs. It's super comfy. I definitely wear it with the petticoat underneath or a chemise or something because it can be a little itchy, but super comfy. Loved wearing it. Loved having my pockets, my giant pockets. The skirts do get a little heavy sometimes, but you get used to it. I'm actually a little sad that the weather's getting better because I won't be wearing them as much, but at least it gives me something to look forward to in the winter time because it's super cozy. But anyway, that's that about the skirt. Next time we'll move on to the bodice. I'll save my thoughts on that for, for next time. And I'll see you next week with something new. I have such a list of things. Um, I will be traveling back to Pennsylvania for two weeks in May. so. If, if I'm not able to keep up with the schedule, please forgive me. I didn't die. Hopefully I didn't die. I can't promise that. But I'm going to try to keep up with the weekly schedule. I do have some things filmed and things I can edit. So uh, I'm going to try to stick with it. All right, I'll let you go now and I'll see you later. Bye.